the rain is falling upon the empty street, turning into the grasp of darkness. And the monstrous clouds began to roar. I heard the raindrops falling into the rooftop when my door suddenly opened. I was there sitting in the stool doing my usual work, and I was startled when I saw her. I stopped and eyed her with uncertainty as she leaned heavily in the threshold, clutching a faded scarf tightly around her narrow chest. She was about to leave when I protested. She looked up and tried to smile. A smile of gratitude that lighted up her face for a moment, but still I can see the pain, the anger, and fear in her eyes. I had been working in the house of Senorita. I had been happy because the Senorita was kind. She was always been there for me when I needed help. I had no regrets for spending my whole life in that house. But not until that day when her younger brother came home. He looked at me, trying to gauge my unsuspicious eyes in his, but I tried to escape fast. The night was so peaceful, so peaceful that my eyes were tightly shut, not knowing that the Senorito had already entered my room. I didn't notice that he's already on top of me, giving me stares like as if he would kill me if I shout. I can still remember his drunkenness his belligerent eyes, his ungodly lips and hands that had seared my flesh with their touch. The anger and fear are all over my body. I want to do anything that could make him pay for what he did, but I don't know how. I had wandered through unfamiliar places until the sudden rain had driven me to his door. Days have passed. We became comfortable to each other. It was not only lovely, but happy days as well. We shared the same dream. We shared the same memories. We shared the same problems. I am ready to marry him. I am ready to offer my life to him. I am ready to be his half till the rest of our lives. But nothing had been said about marriages. His work became steady. We might save the money to marry on. I was swapping the shop one morning and he left to deliver the pair of shoes to its owner when a fine lady appeared outside our house. It was Senorita. She wanted me to come back to her. She wanted me to stay again in the house. In the house that witnessed the evil exploit of his brother. I rejected her offer. The Senorita gave me a money at first, I rejected. But my mind changed after realizing that we could use the money for our wedding. I gave it to him, expecting him to save it for our wedding. But I was wrong. One day, when I got home, 
I gave her a wrap package. At first, she didn't want to unwrap the small package. Truth hung by a hair, and as long as it conscious of a sharp and indignant agony. It was pretty, although an inexpensive violet of thin silk. A day had passed when she decided to leave. She told me she had found a new job. I wanted to go with her, but she asked me not to. I gave her a bundle of clothes. My face was pale in the late afternoon light. She smiled at me. Again? I saw the same eyes, the eyes with a pain in it. I wanted to ask her, but she already left me. She went back to her senorita. She went back to the house where her nightmare began. It's been a month, but she never came back. I am still waiting. I am. I miss the every single melody of her voice, the intensity of her hugs, her affectionate kiss. I can still remember her smile, her smile that day when she's at the end of the street, turning her head and wave her hand to me as I stood by the gate of the falling darkness. I stayed up all day to see where the sun went while waiting for her return. Cause I thought that watching a sunset would help. But it left me more. It left me more in the dark. She never came back. Street.